Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Eva. Are you enjoying your cheese? Yes. Very good. Well, okay, folks. Today is Monday already. Monday morning, July 13, 2020. And the gospel for today comes from St. Matthew. We're still continuing reading St. Matthew's gospel. This is from chapter 10, verses 34 to 11. Sorry. Chapter 10, verse 34, and chapter 11, verse 1. Okay, continuing to chapter 11, verse 1. <laughs> okay, well, we're not going to read the whole gospel, but... Uh, parts of it and comment on what we would like to understand for today. So Jesus said to his apostles, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace, but the sword. Let's make that sink for a minute. Let's make that sink for a minute. Do not think that I come to bring peace upon the earth. I thought the Lord is a peacemaker, right? I thought he told his apostles many times after his resurrection, peace be with you, right? And it's the same thing we say at Mass all the time, right? Peace be with you. And then we even have the giving of peace, right? Uh, at Mass. I thought Catholicity, being a Christian, is about spreading peace. Hmm? And isn't Jesus Christ, didn't Jesus Christ call himself the, uh, the meek and humble of heart? How can the same Jesus, who is meek and humble of heart, and who is compassionate and merciful, tell us now, that <laughs> I did not come to bring peace, but the sword. <clears throat> Isn't that contradictory? Huh? What do you think? Isn't that a contradiction? Huh? You see, that's why there's reason for us to try to understand what our Lord's message is really all about. Okay? What does he mean when he say, I did not come to bring peace, but the sword. <clears throat> okay? Our Lord just reminded us, right, last week, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. So sheep, aren't sheep supposed to be, you know, among the meekest of animals? <laughs> how, how is it now? That How do you now reconcile that with what our Lord is saying today? That, but I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring the sword. Now, what is the sword a symbol of? Huh? You, you little kids have been trying to fashion swords, right? What are your swords? Why don't you show us uh, the, the latest thing? You know, these kids, they love uh, fashioning uh, swords out of all sorts of materials. And the latest was, uh, well, they, they, they tried to fashion a sword out of a solid piece of wood, right? This Joseph and Mia have been doing a lot of crafts these days, and, and that's what they do. So, okay, what is the symbol of a sword all about? What does that symbolize for anybody? What is it? Uh, Joe? Fighting. Fighting, right? The sword is a weapon, right? It's for fighting. What are we fighting here? How come our Lord says, I didn't come to bring peace, but the sword? So what is our Lord trying to tell us here? Hmm? Why the sword? You see, in the olden days, the sword or a dagger or a knife was really a symbol of fighting, a symbol of being armed, a symbol of being ready to fight anytime. Even Peter, right, drew his sword. And the centurion was trying to apprehend our Lord, right? They had the sword. See? It was like the Second Amendment right, <laughs> the, the, the right to bear arms, right? In their case, they had the sword, right? So what does our Lord want us to understand with the sword? Yet he tells us, you know, I'm sending you like sheep 
in the midst of wolves. But remember, he said, but do not make any mistake about it. You might be sheep, but I don't like you to be sheepish. I don't like you to be uh, 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 um, intimidated by the wolves. I want you to be as wise as serpents, shrewd as serpents, learning to discern good and evil in the world and knowing, using your head, about how to fight evil in the middle of the world. See? So our Lord, when He tells us, I did not come to bring peace, but the sword, wants to remind us that we are involved in a warfare. He is telling His disciples and all of us, we are involved in a war. That is why you need your swords. You need to fight. You need your weapons. I am putting you in the middle of the world because the world is a warfare. It is a warfare between good and evil. And there are serpents and wolves in this world. And even if I tell you that you are sheep, you need not be sheepish. You need not be intimidated by these wolves. You need to be ready to fight. <clears throat> and our Lord is telling us that that sword is not a symbol of destruction. It is a symbol of disruption. Okay? It is not for purposes of destruction, but for disruption. What is it that we Christians in the middle of the world ought to disrupt? Huh? The reign of sin, the reign of Satan, the reign of sin in the world is what our Lord is sending us to disrupt in the middle of the world. And that, when we do that, that is not a peaceful mission. Okay? That is not a peaceful mission. It is going to cause trouble among people. Okay? It is going to rock the boat of people. It is going to disrupt their, 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 their peace. It is going to disrupt their, their complacency. Okay? It is going to disrupt their laziness. Because it's not something comfortable to do. Right? And that is why if we read through this gospel, our Lord is telling us what kind of disruption is going to happen. He says, For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother. And a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's enemies will be those of his own household. Wow. What does that mean? Right? Our Lord is not, of course, encouraging us to fight among each other. But what our Lord is trying to remind us here is that, look, there will be opposition when you try to do good. There will be opposition. And the opposition might right might be right where you're at, at home. It might even start from your own home when you're trying to do good towards others in your own home. When you're trying to disrupt their laziness and their complacency, it will disrupt their complacent peace. You are bringing trouble even among people of your own household. Of course, remember that the context of this is they were trying to uh, evangelize people and, you know, uh, telling people about the good news of the kingdom of God, right? And so there might be people who don't share the same belief in your own household at that time. But it's relevant to us up to now. Even if a whole household might be Catholic, not everybody in a household might be sharing the same uh, 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 zeal and the same desires, of sanctity, okay? And those among us who might be striving more than the others are actually causing disruption in the lives of those others who live among us. Okay? It's because, because doing good, living a life of sanctity is disturbing for those people who don't, who don't struggle to become saints. It is disturbing. But our Lord says, you know, hey, don't bother about those that you might disturb. Because that is a natural consequence of trying to be my disciple. 
That is a natural consequence of living up to your baptismal calling to become saints in the middle of the world. Our Lord tells us, whoever does not take up his cross, because this is going to be a cross, right? And follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever will favor his own life and his own comfort and his own uh, desires and his own pleasures is not worthy of me. You got to lose that. You got to leave that kind of life behind and lose it for my sake and you will find it. You will find life in heaven. You will find eternal life. So our Lord is challenging all of us here to be disruptors in our own environment, to disrupt complacency, to disrupt our laziness, to disrupt our love for, for the wrong things, okay? and take upon ourselves the cross and the path that is least taken, the narrow gate that leads to eternity. The life of Jesus' disciples is not meant to be comfortable. Okay? The life that our Lord is calling us to live is not meant to be comfortable. It's meant to be a warfare. It's meant to be a struggle. And he warned us about it. How is it so uncomfortable? Let's count the ways. Why is Christian life so uncomfortable? You know what? Let's begin with the basics. Because, number one, we have to speak the truth always. Number two, we have to defend the truth always. Number three, we have to live the truth always. Always. We cannot rest. We cannot rest. Now that's uncomfortable, right? That's uncomfortable because it's easier to be complacent and lazy. It's easier to take life easy. It's easier not to care about all the wrong things beginning from our old lives and the wrong things happening around us. It's easy to do that. In fact, that's the most comfortable thing to do. But our Lord is not calling us to do that. He called us to fight and bring the sword. He called us to disrupt the status quo. Okay? He called us to disrupt the status quo and install the kingdom of God in the middle of the world. Now that is a tough mission. And that is uncomfortable. And that's going to make a lot of people uncomfortable. It's a very taxing, very tiring, very exhausting thing to do. To always speak the truth. To always defend the truth. To always live the truth 24-7 for all of our lives. Who can do that? Who can do that? Tell me. Who can do that? Well, I'm going to tell you who can do that. And who should do that. It's you and me. It's you and I. It's all of us who have received the grace of baptism. The calling to become saints in the middle of the world. And why can we do it? Not because we're supermen, but because we have the grace of God to do it. Grace is the empowerment that allows us to take up the sword and wage this war on earth. Grace. And that is why we need the sources of grace. That is why we need to go to confession. And what else? What are the other sources of grace? Communion. Holy communion. Very good. What else? All the, other All the other sacraments that we can avail of. Right? And on top of that, what else? Prayer. Prayer. Very good, Joe. What else? Huh? Holy Mass. Yeah. Good acts, good deeds, right? Living up to virtues every day of our lives. That is what makes this whole war possible. Okay? 
It is primarily a consequence of the grace of God. And that is why we need to avail of that grace all the time, as much as possible. We go to the sacraments, primarily Holy Communion and Confession. And that is why, let me reiterate again, that is why it has become a crisis of magnanimous proportions when the bishops decided to close the churches and deny the faithful of the sacraments. That is why it is very wrong to have done this. And I hope you bishops and clergy are listening to this. I'm sorry to be hammering on the same point many times over, but that's just the truth. You have denied, you bishops and priests have denied the faithful of the very armor that they need, the very ammunition that the faithful need in order to disrupt the status quo of evil in the world. You are not providing us with the weapons and the ammunition we need. And mind you, <laughs> you, you have a very big responsibility on your shoulders. And uh, you better start rethinking all of this kind of action. We cannot make the pandemic an excuse for depriving the faithful of the graces we need in order to wage this battle every day and the war that our baptismal calling has given us as a mission to fight in the middle of the world. So what do we do? Number one, we persevere despite the difficulties, despite the crisis situations, despite all of the uh, problems we might have in this world, we persevere. We live up to the virtue of perseverance. And we ask our Lord and our Lady and our guardian angels and all our friendly saints in heaven to help us with this struggle. Because, by the way, just to remind you, okay, the, 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 the church militant, see? That's why we are called the church militant on earth, because we are in a war on earth. We can call upon the church triumphant already in heaven, who are our allies, the saints, to fight this war with us on earth. That is why we need to pray. We need to ask them to help us in this struggle. Because they know very well how to win it. They are there already. They've won the war. They've won their own battles. Okay? So we need to keep praying for the graces to be able to do this. To keep speaking the truth. To keep defending the truth. And to keep living up to the truth. Number two. We need, as much as possible, the grace of the sacraments. So even uh, in a situation like this, we have to strive and find opportunities to go to confession if we can. To go to communion if we can. Because these are the sources of grace. The sacraments. And number three, never to forget that even if we are meant to disrupt the reign of Satan in the world, we have to do it with charity. It doesn't mean to say that because we are warriors of Christ and we wield the sword, it doesn't mean to say we will be uncharitable towards others. Okay? So we have to remember to always be charitable while we wage our battles. Okay. That's a lot to consider in one Monday morning but this gospel commentary is so rich. I mean, this gospel for today's Mass is just so rich in meaning that there is plenty more for us to try to discern and understand. So I'd encourage all of you to read the Gospel of Matthew on your own at your leisure, especially during these days. I would like to thank people have plenty of time to do it. So read up on the Gospel of Matthew and you're going to find plenty of our Lord's challenges in there. And uh, that we need to reflect on and try to understand. Okay? Okay, folks. That's it for us. Say bye-bye, Eva. Bye-bye. Ah, very good girl. Okay, everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye.